on this channel. I'll be talking about whatever I fucking want. Misinformation is at an all-time high these days. From TikTok creators to the two most dishonest news articles, which the one originally started it first, the sim for journalist whose name is Max Tanny. The article is titled Inside MSNBC's Middle East Conflict and as it reads here, it's already full of lies. MSNBC has quietly taken three of its Muslim broadcasters out of the anchor's chair since Hamas's attack on Israel last Saturday amid America's wave of sympathy for Israel terror victims. The network did not air a scheduled Thursday night episode of the Mehdi Hassan show on the streaming platform Peacock. MSNBC reversed the plan for Ayman D to fill in this week for the network to for a host Joy Reid 7 p.m. show on Thursday and Friday. Moya Houdin, an Egyptian American journalist and veteran NBC News correspondent, covered conflict from Gaza for two years. In 2021, he aggressively questioned Israeli leaders on strikes on the territory. Two network sources the knowledge of the plans towards Semaphor that the network also plans to have. Alicia Mendes fill in this upcoming weekend for Ali Belchi, a third Muslim American host who on Sunday interviewed a spokesman for the Palestinian Authority. See, what Max Kenny doesn't understand is that when it comes to live wall-to-wall -wall coverage, you are most definitely are not going to be there if you're going to go to Israel because you're assigned to go there on the front lines of the war. And so reporting with your sources saying that Alicia Mendez is going to replace Ali Belshi on a show the following weekend, that never happened. Some staff at MSNBC have been concerned by the moves, feeling all three hosts have some of the deepest knowledge of the conflict. NBC says shifts are con coincidental and the three continue to appear on air to report and pr provide analysis. If some MSNBC staffs were really concerned, why not give out their names? If you claim to have these so-called sources, a company official being really pushed back against any motion that either Hassan or Moyamdi were being sidelined in any way. Over the past several days, Moyamdi has appeared on several programs on MSNBC as a guest, including shows hosted by Reed and Chris Hayes. I mean, of course, MSNBC had to push back against the uh, false claims because an NBC Universal News Group spokesman sent a media in a statement. We have and will continue to cover the barbaric terrorist attacks on, the, on defenseless civilians in Israel last weekend and the tragic war it has provoked thoroughly and in all their dimensions. SEM4 has included the same statement as well, which indicates that that a so-called uh, journalist is conveniently lying about MSNBC. And the source lift nudge pointed out additional background in addition to what MSNBC gave Tani to paint a different picture. Tani noted, Moyo Dean has appeared on several programs on MSNBC as a guest, including shows hosted by Reed and Chris Hayes, and that the Sons Peacock show is taped. 
and the network official says his show was shelved in favor of keeping coverage on the NBC streaming service more up to date. Well, yeah, it was put on hold temporarily to make room for a special report wall-to-wall coverage of the war. NBC did not release a statement about why it pulled Modine in 2014. And when I wrote an article about Hassan and Moyo Ding's coverage of the flare-up in 2021, MSNBC did not make either host available for comment. If you're going to question why MSNBC or NBC News didn't release a statement or let their journalist release their own statement in 2014 and 2021, then you need to rethink the way that you do independent journalism. MSNBC appears to be avoiding any suggestion that it could be aligned with a view that's more centered on Palestinian civilians and trying to protect itself and its Muslim stars by putting them in the roles of correspondents and analysts not at the center of its programming, or they're actually putting them on certain special assignments as they are, so they can one, report from the ground, and two, report directly to another news anchor in person. Because that's what happens when you do an actual special report coverage. So no, this doesn't, this doesn't mean that MSNBC is trying to protect their Muslim anchors. Hence why MSNBC has been doing an up to the minute coverage when the September 11th attacks happened in New York City. That's why when MSNBC usually airs its regular news programming, they would postpone it to air a special report coverage that are up to the minute every time so we the viewers can get that updated information as it comes right away that's how special reports work so no don't tell me that msnbc has quietly taken three of its muslim anchors out of their broadcasts and don't tell me that they have suspended the shows of the three Muslim anchors because of the rising tensions in Gaza. That's not how it happened. Arab news is to blame for spreading misinformation as well. Because look, they clearly have done their work spreading misinformation about, about these three Muslim anchors. And their misleading article frames it as such. Plus, how the fuck are you going to be a credible news source if you're going to misspell the Muslim anchor's last name? Leave it there without going back to the editorial board to check if you spelled it right. Arab news' sources are incredibly wrong because MSNBC has not confirmed the suspension at all. Arab News say they approached MSNBC, but they immediately published a falsified story. They at least got one thing right, that Belshi is still reporting from the ground on other shows. But what they got it wrong is the suspended part, because it is not unclear. Again, when it comes to wall-to-wall, -wall, up to the minute coverage, MSNBC has to use MSNBC reports to go live and cover the international events of the day because it's breaking news all day long. So they need a team of correspondents to go to the front lines of where it happened and cover the story, even if MSNBC anchors who are guests such as Ayman Moihanti and Mani Hassan were on MSNBC reports giving their expertise of what's been happening to the Palestinians doesn't mean that they were sidelined or suspended at all. 
And the fact that Arab News and Sem4 both jump into conclusions by making falsified information as to what really happened really tells me all about their reporting and the fact that Sem4 started 12 months ago and that Arab News started 48 years and 6 months ago and 5 years 6 months ago online tells me all I need to know. And these two TikTokers were one of the many people who spread this blatant misinformation by reading that stupid article from Arab News without having to do any of the fact checking whatsoever. So first, here's Eddie Smith's video. MSNBC is now reportedly suspending three of their Muslim anchors who have been critical of Israel's constant bombardment of Palestinians in Gaza. Mehdi Hassan, Ali Velshi, and Ayman Moedin have all had their shows canceled or have been replaced by substitute anchors this week. And MSNBC is still denying that they suspended the anchors despite canceling all their shows. Like I said earlier, their shows were off the air temporarily. And these aren't usually people who I agree with. I feel like they got their jobs at MSNBC because they're usually willing to toe the line. Toe the line? Please. They're journalists. It's their job to report new news. They don't toe the line for anything. Toe the line. What kind of stupid fucking phrase is that? Who says that? say what the establishment wants them to say. Again, no. They are journalists. It's their job to report the news. And keep misusing words that you don't understand what they mean. Because the word establishment does not mean what you think it means in your own little head. But apparently after watching the murderous Israeli bombing campaign in Gaza this week, they felt like they had to say something. And now MSNBC is suspending the only Muslim anchors who are willing to stand up for Muslim Arabs living in Gaza. The motion that you randomly believed this news article without doing your due diligence to check the cable channel itself makes you look so gullible. Whatever happened to don't believe everything you read on the internet? This is what happens when reporters don't do what the owners, the advertisers, and the Israeli lobby want them to do. The corporate media systematically pushes out voices who are critical of Israel and the Zionist apartheid regime. Again, that's not what happened at all. You're just saying complete and utter nonsense. Eddie. Which is why coverage of this issue in the West overwhelmingly favors Israel. So this is absolutely shameful by MSNBC. They are propagandists who are cheering on apartheid and war. And as much as I disagree with these anchors on most issues, I hope they're reinstated. Free Palestine. This is absolutely shameful of Midwestern Marx who is a propagandist who would believe on any falsified article like Fox News and never check the comments on Twitter from other Twitter users who actually watch MSNBC and say that they're not suspended of any kind. Now hear from a TikToker who is more vulnerably Gullible, your favorite guy. Shame on you, MSNBC, for removing these three Muslim personalities off of your show because of the war. They were never removed. This is clear discrimination. There was no reason to remove these three. And this is not the only time newscasters have been removed because they have been supporting Palestine or been Muslim. Oh please, what happened to Katie Harper is not the same thing as MSNBC because MSNBC did not remove these three Muslim anchors. Because one, Katie Harper works for a newspaper that has a show of their own and these three anchors work for a cable television network. They are not the same. 
Mark Lamont Hill was fired from CNN in 2018 because he said Palestine from the river to the sea. Okay, and I don't think Mark Lamont Hill should be fired from CNN. But these two examples are not good comparisons. So again, newspaper, cable, news, television, not the same. The blatant discrimination that MSNBC has shown by removing these three off of their respective shows is ridiculous. The blatant disregard that you have shown your favorite guy by not learning about how television news works as I already just explained is ridiculous. And nobody's talking about it. Apparently, everybody in the media is okay with them kicking out their Muslim broadcasters. False. I'm talking about those three anchors right now. But not for the dumbest reasons that you claim. They're complicit. They don't care. It doesn't take a lot to connect the dots that these three were kicked off because they're Muslim. No, it doesn't take a lot to connect the dots to know that these three Muslim anchors were on MSNBC, not permanently removed from their shows, but to give their analysis and reporting on the ground. Even every single MSNBC viewer knows this because they all tweeted about this. They call out this article from Maxwell Kenny for spreading such a lie about Belshi, who is on the ground in Israel, Amon, who was featured on Alex Wagner and other programs, and Mehdi Hassan too. I mean, it's pretty common knowledge if you're an active MSNBC viewer to know that this is how it works in the television news industry as the way I see it because many news outlets scrap regular programming for international events and that is the case because Bel Shidi has been reporting in the Middle East and many I many has been in and out and Amen of course was on for many hours as an expert considering the fact that he had been a foreign con correspondent who's been in the Israel and Palestinian countries before. So why did Max Kenny wrote that about actually watching MSNBC is totally beneath me. Because anyone that actually follows Amen or Ali Melshi or Mehdi Hassan on Twitter would know that they've been covering the, this event all week long. And the way that I see it, Sim4 probably doesn't have any journalistic integrity. And if Sim4 did, why would they tweet out this false information? And why would they publish that story on their, on their website? Why? Why would they do that? My guess is that they probably done it for clicks and views, which is what some untrusted news articles like Fox News has done in recent years. But since Samaphore was founded by a former editor in chief of BuzzFeed News and also media columnist at the New York Times and a former CEO of Bloomberg Media Group. Should they know better than to let this false information about this article spread? Because clearly many folks that actually watch MSNBC every day, every weekend, are not happy that this is this article is just a straight up lie and at the time of uploading this video after making it they still have yet to take the article down which is why i'm gathering all the tweets from the past two weeks because people need to understand that 
if you're working from a news industry and you happen to spread some false information, especially when it retains to a journalist who has not been sidelined or suspended at all whatsoever, then clearly the journalist in question should in fact correct his mistakes because the journalist who works at Semaphore barely follows Ali Belshi, Manny Hassan, and Ayman Moyhadi on Twitter. Like if you want to click on your article so bad, you can do that without the clickbait and a lot of people hated that because clearly they're not happy with the way that you did your journalistic duty to make that story. And it's pretty crystal clear by judging on these Twitter comments. Everybody has the right to be disappointed and rightfully so because if you're not an MSNBC viewer that tunes in regularly then how are you of all people gonna have your say on making a news report about where they have been if you did not actually check the entire cable channel for hours at a time itself how do you think everybody is coming to you telling you to correct the fucking mistakes that you made in this article how do you think that because here's the thing if you really truly care about msnbc but yet you have made a false claim about what msnbc is actually doing and then clearly in my view you're not a journalist who cares about correcting the facts that he got messed up and clearly it is a clear misdirection of what you're supposed to be reporting on and the fact that you kept this article up for almost a whole month now is very telling as a person who actually watches the cable network itself and I question your journalistic integrity on how you do things when it comes to reporting what's in our news media businesses. Now before I go, if anyone wants to contact the all I just gotta say is this. If your purpose online is to read misinformation, if your purpose is to not verify your journalist's story before you allow his story to go published, then you need to go back and correct it. And if you want to email this outlet, here's the email right here. And here's another one just in case since they followed Semaphore's lead. And I really hope that NBC News or NBC Universal, at least, are aware of what's going on and sue the hell out of these outlets for libel and mischaracterizing the way that MSNBC is run. And if you want to contact this reporter directly, here's his email on his Twitter bio. Just to make sure what he's reporting on is clearly misinformation. And I hope mo more people are aware that they should not really believe everything they read on the internet.